The new Mantis X10 Fire Amp's performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. Hey guys, Brian Hill uh, with the Complete Combatant doing your active self-protection extra, uh, Mantis Dry Fire Monday. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the fundamental of follow through today. Uh, I may even change some words for you and maybe change the way you think about it. Uh, I'm getting ready to take a class this weekend and so I need to get ready to perform at a higher level. So it's not time for me to be practicing speed work or technical skills. Uh, whatever skill I've earned in practice is simply what I'm going to take with me forward. So this final week before I go to a class or I go to a match, I really want to prepare myself to perform at my highest level. So I'm not trying to build speed or try to build a new technique. This is probably not the time to do it. Uh, what I want to do is really let my performance shine through. Steve Anderson calls it match mode. Lanny Basham covered it in his book with winning in mind. Uh, I tend to say for us performance mode because we tend to either shoot classes or we may have to do it in self-defense or we may do it at a match. It's all similar things. It's something that we work a lot with fighters in mixed martial arts and jiu-jitsu is the process of always being in the now, being present with what you're doing uh, without the risk of sounding like some Zen fortune cookie when I say that. Uh, you have to be fully present w with whatever you're doing. And everybody says, well, of course I'm present. But what I tend to find with people is either they live in the past or they live in the future. For shooters, the past means they're very upset with something they just did and they're giving themselves a hard time about it. And they're trying to get, I don't know, flog themselves, insult themselves at the same time. And that's going to goad them on to shoot better. But they're not paying attention to what they're doing now. So a lot of times we see a bad shot followed up with another bad shot. People who are living in the future are very concerned about their performance anxiety. How well am I going to do? How's the next shot going to go? What are people going to think of me? And both those things are incredibly destructive because we know that shooting is a cycle in nature. So this weekend I'm going to Modern Samurai Project with Scott Jelinski. Uh, it's a red dot instructor class. If you're, if you're a student of the gun or you're an, an instructor yourself, uh, you should never stop training. It's simply a wonderful process to improve yourself because the thing that you take to every class is you and you have to work on these fundamentals to get better at it. Whatever your weakest fundamental is is what's going to really fail you when you're, when you're training. Uh, the idea of the final fundamental is follow through and in archery and precision shooting that means something different than it does in pistol shooting. Uh, you know, if I was working with a bow, I'd maintain that position and let the bow follow through, and then I'd simply have to get another arrow out and get started again. Same thing in precision shooting, respiratory pause, I get everything lined up, I shoot, and I allow the gun to stay incredibly still while the bullet exits the barrel. Um, with these short barrel pistols, uh, we're not having that. There's a little bit of delay, but it's, we know it's less than probably a tenth of a second. So holding still is really important. But the problem with the word follow through means that something has ended in my mind. You, you have stopped and now you have to start again. Uh, if shooting is a cycle, uh, we don't stop until something changes with what we're doing. What that would mean in self-defense if the, if the person decided to leave or they fell down and stopped fighting. Uh, that would be a change that we have to stop the process in. Uh, if I was shooting a match and I've called two good shots on the target and that's what's required of me, then I simply stop sh shooting and move to the next uh, cycle, which may be moving or transitioning to another target. If I'm shooting a qualification, I do the exact number of rounds being present for each shot. And then when I'm done with that, to simply take my finger off the trigger and then take my gun off the target so that I'm, I'm ready to do the next thing. All right, so let's think about the cyclic process. Of course, getting the gun out is administrative in nature. We have to do that quickly. There's no reason for a slow draw unless you don't want somebody to see it. So if we know we're going to draw, we're going to be explosive, we get the gun out. As soon as we get the gun out, we've established our grip. Now the finger comes to the trigger. We clean up the sight movie, Gabe White. As we begin to press the trigger of the rear, we continue focusing on the sights because what we really want to see is whether it's an iron sight or a red dot is we want to see it lift. Okay. And I got to tell you, a lot of people don't see that. They simply blink right before they shoot or they stop paying attention to what they're seeing because they say now in their mind. So as you're pressing the trigger, you've got to see it lift and it should come back to the same spot. You can predict that it's going to float right back down. And if you'll cycle as the gun cycles, that means don't pin the trigger to the rear and hold it. Go ahead. The gun's getting ready. You get ready. Cycle the trigger again. 
go ahead and get the prep out of the way. And if the target requires you to shoot one more time, you do that and you continue that process. As soon as you've gotten your hits or something has changed, your finger comes off the trigger and the gun comes off the target, you move to the next activity. Okay? Don't pull it in. Don't retract it really hard. Stay in the performance mode. So what I'm really doing is visually verifying everything that I've been training and making sure that I'm having just a tiny bit of visual patience to see the sights or the dot and understand what I'm seeing. Now, in dry practice, this is hard to do. Um, I think it's a little easier with a red dot than iron sights, but you can do it with both. If you look behind me, I have multiple targets behind me. Uh, and I do several drills. Uh, the one with the smaller circles on it and squares can be used as a distance target. So uh, my, my dry fire dojo is pretty big. So I can stand almost all, at, all the way at 10 yards to shoot these, which would be similar to shooting something at 25 and 15 and 10. If I stand closer, it would be a little, a little different, but each one will require something different. So this guy, if I'm shooting everything here, that's a flash sight picture and I'm gonna shoot it quickly. And if I was shooting this or this, I'm gonna have a floating, I mean, it's gotta float inside the boundaries of this target and I'm going to carefully press the trigger. That's Tom Givens for the trigger speeds, Max Michelle for the sight speeds. And then if I'm gonna shoot something like this, the only thing I can do is be utterly focused on the target and press it, the trigger precisely. Cause this will allow very little error, almost no error. So that's how I'm gonna stay in the process. And as I move from one to the other, I'm trying to modulate the speeds that are acceptable levels of accuracy for that target. Now, some people that are really fast when they practice uh, process uh, or follow through, they just click the triggers real quick. They don't really see what's happening, okay? So uh, then they go to shoot it and they have a lot of misses. And then some people do it so slowly and so methodically that they never increase their speed. What you wanna do is set up a par timer and have a certain number of targets up there and then you're gonna shoot them during that par time. You can do several things. Uh, the Vice Presidente is a good drill to do inside. Uh, that's basically from seven yards, draw and fire two on three targets, do a reload and fire two more on each of the three targets. So it's a really good way for you to practice. You have several things in the process. You have to have a good draw, you have to get a good drip, grip, then you have to see a good sight picture, one, two, one, two, one, two. Then you have to do the process of reloading, one, two, one, two. And you have to really stay present. Another thing you can do, and, and Steve Anderson is the one that came up with this one, is I can shoot everything on that target for 15 or 20 seconds. I just continue to shoot it, and I modulate the speeds according to the size of the target. Uh, the fast drill. Uh, is a really good way for you to practice. You draw and fire to the head, do a reload, and fire forward of the body. Okay? If you're really good at that, you can do it under five seconds. All right? uh, if you look up Todd Green and pistol form, you'll find that drill. Remember, we're gonna have multiple actions while we're doing this, so we've got to really change our speeds a lot. If I'm working here, hey, gun's empty, mag's empty. Okay, we're good to go. So if I was working here and I just went one, two, one, two, one, two, and then I go to get the new magazine, get the magazine, drop the old magazine, get it back in, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, finger comes off and I stay in the moment and recognize if there's anything that I missed or I needed to do. Then I retract the gun and stay relaxed with it, okay, and bring it back in. Now I'm gonna leave that magazine on the ground. You guys get the idea, but I can do that with three targets, two on each, reload, two on each, and that really helps your processing. It helps you get deep into the cycle. So remember, shooting is a cycle. That means it's circular, and we always keep it moving. We wanna get the gun out. We wanna be able to see the sights on the target and start cleaning up the sight movie as we prep and press the trigger. We wanna press the trigger at the correct speed for the size of the target. We wanna see the sight lift, which is calling your shot. And as the sight comes back down and we've predicted it's coming back down, we wanna be ready to shoot again. So we've already prepped the trigger and we're good to go again. Um, it's interesting. People that take a lot of classes get really good at doing this with their trigger finger. So they'll draw, they'll drive the gun out, they'll do all the aiming and then they move the finger. Remember, that's wasting time. The, the rule is this, if you've made the decision to shoot and the sights are on the target, your finger should go to the trigger. Okay, I said that in a little different order, but I want you to think about it. it's a decisional process. So if I've decided to shoot something, there's no use at me aiming with my finger in high register. 
If I'm not going to shoot something, there's no reason for that gun to be on the target. It's pretty simple. So as I'm working through these things, I want to get that finger in there a little bit sooner and start working it instead of being so robotic. Um, you know, at the beginning, this keeps us really safe, and now we want to start working and seeing the contextual relativity of this drill. So as I get it out, and I've made the decision to shoot, and the sights are on the target. It's one of the reasons I really like a hammer gun, because it takes a little bit more on that first shot. I have a little bit of movement in there, and I realize that I'm starting to work it. So stay in the now. Work the process. You can only affect what you're doing right now. The past is gone future doesn't exist yet and both of them won't help you very much in your shooting so make sure you take your time stay in the process uh, if you tend to freeze up I want you to take an exhale before you go and that thaws the mind when it's under pressure that lets the ice off it takes the freeze out it takes the pressure out some of you that shoot matches you hate the beeper uh, don't hate the beeper the beeper is simply going to release you and let you go, and as soon as you hear the beep, you can start doing the thing that you've been preparing for. Standing there is the, the, the torture. So if I visualize what I want and I begin to exhale, I'm going to have a much better time staying in the process. Okay? Uh, human beings' attention span is really, really short. Some of you have already lost attention in that mere moment that I paused. So let me say it again. Your attention span and my attention span is incredibly short. You have to learn to cycle your attention span at the same time. That helps you stay in the process. If you find yourself getting distracted by something you already did or worrying about something in the future, simply remind yourself to come back to what you're doing and do that better. You know, it's interesting. I get a lot of comments on these videos and people have a hard time paying attention sometimes. Uh, maybe my targets bug them. Maybe I bounce from side to side. So the mind is constantly being distracted by what's going on. And then we miss the information that's being offered by our sight movie. Did we do a good job? Can I call that shot as it lifts? And in dry practice, I just simply need to see the sight and clean it up as I press the trigger of the rear. And remember, some of you press so hard on your trigger, you're going to see the sight dip out of the way, and that's a clue. So stay in the process, work on this, this is a great way to tune up right before class or right before a match. Um, so you should always have something coming up in your training schedule that's going to make you focus to this point. If you just practice speed or you just practice uh, technical skills, you're going to get stagnant. We need some verification and some testing of it. Go to the range, shoot some drills. Um, there are so many wonderful drills out there that you can simply uh, take off the internet and get, get to work on them. I mentioned a couple of my favorite ones, and I think that'll help you guys out a lot. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope I have, I've done a good job explaining this to you, and I hope that your training is really coming along. This is incredibly possible for all of you. There's nothing special to do these things. You simply have to put the work in, and you have to be willing to examine who you are as a shooter.